Good evening. Is this going? Is this working? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, welcome this evening. I'd like you to all take your seats, please. We're going to have the presentation of the colors. Please all rise. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. It gives me a great honor and pleasure this evening to introduce to you your mayor, Rico Medina, who will be giving his State of the City address. Rico. Good evening. First and foremost, I wish to thank uh, Bob Hearn, who was playing the piano, who lives here in San Bruno and was volunteering uh, his uh, perfection and talent earlier for us today. Also our honor guard, who are our San Bruno police officers, who also do this on the side um, so that we can offer these type of ceremonial activities as well as bringing style, pride, and class to San Bruno. I also want to acknowledge and thank Mayor Jim Wang for opening it up this evening, saying the pledge. It's nice to see you again. And our former vice mayor, Ken Ibera, who is here this evening as well. Welcome, nice to have you. Tonight, we're going to do things a little different. First and foremost, I can't not start by not thanking Jennifer. Jennifer who works in the city manager's office, uh, whether it's from the piano to the food to putting this together, that's who did it. So yes, if it goes well, you can give her credit. If it doesn't go well, she'll tell you to give me the blame. <laughs> but she has done a great job. As you may know, this is a different format for, from us and for us. So normally we would be at Skyline College, but there wasn't this year an installation of chamber officers. So with their approval, we decided to come here. And the rationale for coming here was so that we could have it open to the community during non-working hours with no charge for the meal so that it can be open to all. It is being taped. It will be played on our website. And of course, YouTube, I've got to put that plug in there, will also be showing it and it will be uh, available. So with that, we will get started. And I appreciate all of you being here today. 
First and foremost, there are some introductions I'd like to have, and that is we have uh, two supervisors with us from the city, uh, from San Mateo County. First District, David Pine. From the Fifth District, David Canepa. We shall also have Elmer from uh, Senator uh, Hill's office. In addition, Terry Chavez from the San Bernardino Park School District. <laughs> Welcome and congratulations. I also think it's important uh, because we do have a lot of volunteers that are here. And what I mean is the committee commissions and boards. As Jim would say, and all the council says, these are the folks that actually make it happen, that are appointed by the city council, that put in their time and their dedication and their devotion to the community that they live in and that they love. And some of them have served for a short time or for many moons. And there is one person here in this room tonight that is in his 49th year on the San Bruno Parks and Recreation Commission, who I served with as the former chair as well as when I was a park and recreation employee. And that's David Nigel, 49 years service to the community. These are things that, when I was a student at Cappuccino High School as a sophomore appointed by the city council back then, they probably didn't know what they were getting themselves in for, but they appointed me to the Crime Prevention Committee, and I have continued to serve in some capacity to this community for what it's given and what I hope to give back. Because I think in the end, what it is about is us leaving it better than we find it and making a difference along the way. So when it is our time to no longer serve in whatever capacity we wish, and maybe just relax and retire, but that we can look back and see a difference in this city and look back at a difference of what we've made. So I wanna thank and appreciate all the committee commission and board members that are here and for the service and the volunteerism that you give to this community each day. You can see this group of people, you may recognize some of them. We have our Vice Mayor Irene O'Connell, we have Council Member Marty Medina, Council Member Laura Davis, Council Member Michael Salazar. These folks, along with myself, are your elected leaders who have been given the honor and the privilege and elected by you folks to try to move this city forward. We may not always agree, and I think that's a good thing, but what we do have, and I will tell you this, is we have the passion and the care and the concern for this community. There is not one of them that doesn't have the heart and doesn't believe in this city. And together, as we embarked upon the new year, we did do a lot. We have tried to streamline and make more efficiencies. For example, your agenda packets, that we don't receive anymore. So we took the action of not getting agenda packets for city council members. It's about 300 pages for tonight's agenda. We're not getting the finalized budget. It's online, we can get that there but it saves time, it saves efficiencies for staff and for the budget. It's also that anything that used to be delivered to the home stopped last year. We get it online or we go pick it up. The consent items that you see on our agenda, they usually would be under conduct of business. What that would do to staff is having to have a presentation, write it out, rehearse it, prepare it, and that, again, takes away from the efficiencies of them dealing with the bigger projects and the areas of concern that we as a community want to see move forward. And so now you will see some items under consent. Doesn't mean they can't be pulled, doesn't mean that they can't be discussed or have more detail to them, but it does allow us to streamline the process. Speaker cards through our city clerk who has established some new changes. You have a speaker card that you fill out for organization and efficiency, but also now there's a box you check that says, you know, going forward, I wanna have the agenda emailed to me. So if you're here, you can always be notified. On our website, if you see on the agenda and the packets, it used to be you'd have to go to the packet and download the whole 300 pages in order to see the agenda. Now, if you go to our website, you will see the agenda only, all the presentations that are here this evening, and then you will see the packet of information. This is again a way to streamline the process. This is a way to be open and transparent. And so everyone can see whatever they missed or whatever, what, what if they wanna go back and see it again. Public comment, 
on items not on the agenda. That used to be under your public hearing. What that meant was if we had a, shall we say, a, uh, a exciting item under public comment, you could be waiting an hour and a half, two hours, in order to come here just to speak to your elected body. And really what it is, it is the people's meeting. So it has been moved up, and so therefore a person can come in here at seven o'clock knowing within a short period of time they can address their electeds and they can leave or stay if they wish, but they may have business to attend and family to care for, and so we have done that. If you call the city clerk's office now, they've initiated a phone directory. So even after hours, when we're closed, you can get directed to the right place, leave messages, and try to get ahead of the process. Cable TV and advertising. Our city clerk has put back a TV inside City Hall so that A, Channel 1 is ran and shown, but in addition, that it also promotes our San Bruno Cable TV. Agenda packets. For those that are encouraged and wait for the moment they arrive or they go out, it used to be Friday afternoons. It has been moved to Thursdays. If not now, it has been going out on Wednesdays, allowing the public more opportunity and time to review and to see and to know what is going on in addition to your electeds, having the quality time to research and ask questions that they may have. We also, as I indicated earlier about the committee commissions and boards, thanks to through our clerk's office, We've initiated the uh, recognition ceremony that we had last November. We also swear them in here at the council meeting. So we want to honor them and introduce them to the community as well as acknowledge the work that they're about to do. These are some of the things that this city council has taken action with staff support with uh, Melissa and Javon so that we can streamline and be more efficient and effective in what we do. We also have had some change within city hall. We obviously have our city manager, Javon, who is over at the table. We have our city attorney, Mark, and we have our city clerk, Melissa. These three folks are appointed by the city council. Two of them were appointed and began, Melissa, in June of this year, and Javon in July of this year. We began the process as council back on January 8th of 2018. We began looking for a new clerk and a new manager as we transitioned. But also what has happened, which is the first time in two and a half years, on November 13th, we have a full department head team. This is the first. You may not think that that is much. It takes a lot of work in order to build a foundation and to bring us forward and to ensure that they are focusing on what our needs are as a community. And I'd like to introduce them very quickly. Tammy, the assistant city manager. I see Keith, who's our finance director. Sundeep, our cable TV director, Jimmy, our public works director, Joanne, community services director, Darcy, community development director, Dave, our fire chief, Ed, our police chief. This is your department head and your team. <laughs> what I find more important is that the collaboration and cooperation that existed. So as we had one city manager after 15 years, Connie retiring, and we had Javon beginning, they worked collaboratively. This is where sometimes things come to a halt and nobody's appointed and we just sit idle, but we did not. They both worked together as and came to a mutual agreement upon appointments that were made toward the end of Connie's tenure and the beginning of Javon's. That does not happen in a lot of places, but here it did, and I appreciate what they did, as well as the council, for us to continue to move the ball forward as we enter in to, again, a full department team. I know I want to thank my co colleagues because I know as we embarked upon that, I look back last year and there were sometimes we met four times a week for special meetings to interview to work out contracts, work out negotiations. Your five city council members were the ones that did all of that. Yes, we hired a recruiter, but we did the interviews, we led the charge, and we made the decision, and it was a unanimous decision for our clerk and our manager. So uh, I appreciate all the work that you do and did, and I appreciate that, thank you very much. So believe it or not, if you did not know, we have a mission. The city of San Bruno has a mission, which of course is just a short statement about the organization and its purpose. There it is. And it's the city of San Bruno exists to provide exemplary service for our community that enhance and protect the quality of life. So this is very 
simple and to the point. It's a very quick, but that is the mission of the city of San Bruno. Our vision is that San Bruno will be the peninsula city of choice in which to live, learn, work, shop, and play. And core values, integrity, protecting, guarding, and shepherding public resources and interests, teamwork, exemplary service to the community, competent, well-trained employees, friendliness, commitment to the community. And again, these are the core values that the city of San Bruno has. Some people said, I didn't know we had that. Every organization needs to have those fundamentals in which to establish themselves, to focus on what we want to do as a community. When the city council met for the first time, and we met in February of last year, and this what we did is we hired an outside facilitator that came in, sat with the five of us, open to the public, to say, what do we see? What do we need to do? Because as I've said, if each one of us had 10 different things, we can't focus on them effectively. And there was a time that we met as a council, and we did come up with 52 things some years ago. Well, that doesn't get anything done. It doesn't give staff the ability and the focus and the vision that the community has set to its electeds and for the electeds to set to its staff. So this is something that we came up with, and you can see them on the board as far as some of the key points that affect all of our community and for our future, and that we said were important for the 1819 budget year uh, ahead of us. Now this is important, economic vitality. Thank you. Thanks, Irene. So, as you know, unlike the federal government, we have to balance a budget. <laughs> Everyone's paid. There is no shutdown here. But you have to have a balanced budget. We are not allowed to go into debt. It has to balance. With that said, sometimes I think people have a hard time believing the cost that it takes to run services and to meet those expectations that the community wishes to have. Here you can see that the general fund, the general fund is about 48 million, we'll round it up. And then you have your enterprise funds, your water, your wastewater, your stormwater, your cable. And those are independent enterprise funds which are to run independently based by what they charge so they can sustain and make the infrastructure changes that need to be done. So that is our budget for 1819. And that, just for you know, this, that 19 means the budget will end at the end of June, and we begin a new budget process. As far as for the revenues, you can see how it is pied out as far as what we get, whether it's sales tax, TOT, vehicle. Sometimes people thought it would be a lot more in certain categories, but that is the revenues that come into our city. On the expenditure side, you can see a different graph but for our police and fire service alone that serve our community 24-7, it is 58% of our general fund budget. And when we add parks, recreation, the senior center we're in, the pool, the library, that comes up to 76%. So 76% of our budget goes to those services that we have an expectation that we think we're going to see every day and we wanna know when we pick up the phone, they respond. So it does take a lot to operate the city. And I will tell you as a former city employee, Marty may say the same, is we have never operated at high capacity with staff. We have been a lean uh, organization. And I think at some times you may say we have that hometown feel, but sometimes we're operating in that capacity as well. And so as we develop and as we grow, we have to reevaluate our situation and what we're going to do for the future. So obviously, again, there are steps that this council and staff are working on. Uh, implementing a development impact fee program, something that has been talked about for a couple years, but is now on its way and reality. And that will be something that will include fees for community facilities, transportation, fire, policy, general government, and utilities. We're also working on a cost allocation plan for user fee study for re-baseline of all city services to ensure that they're achieving cost recovery and the policy goals of our city council. Also, we're conducting property, transient occupancy, 
and business tax audits. Something that hasn't been done, but again, it's like a trust but verified. It's going back and making sure people are paying what they should and we are collecting what we ought to. So this is not about just new taxes. We are looking at ways in which to make sure that the community participates equally and fairly so that in the businesses that come into our community that on impact fees alone, we are trying to bring that forward. On April 30th, we met to talk about revenue enhancements. And on February 18th, we have a meeting upcoming uh, in regards to that as well, because that is still something that we are looking forward on because we have to be prepared. We're not going to wait to the last minute and then realize there's a shortfall or realize that we should have done something sooner. Also, we received, the city of San Bruno received community grant uh, in 2018. And they were some for Community Day in the Park, which is celebrated in conjunction with Posey Parade, the Narita Sister City Program, which has been very successful and folks that have done it years ago still speak so highly of it today. There was the, a bicycle fix-it station that is now located over at the BART station and public safety training. We all, we all know about, at times, the uncertain happens. And there have been grants, allocations, and donations from YouTube to make sure and ensure and assist us that we can provide those services when called upon to the community. Another exciting opportunity for the city is the Pool and Recreation Center. So this would be a, a joint aquatics and recreation center. For one who worked at the rec center, um, it looks pretty much the same than when I was there and I left in 2000. But these are facilities that were built back in the 50s and they've done well for this community. But as you may recall, there was monies that have been allocated from the community foundation, from the restitution, and so $50 million has been allocated in order for the design and the building. Will it happen tomorrow? No, it takes time. But this is the first time since we have been here at a big municipal facility. 1987 is when this building opened. They had the first O'Brien wedding I worked here. It was the rec leader. That's the, uh, yes, there's the police department, but this is open to the people, the public. If it's open to the people at the police department, but you don't want to go in that way. So, but for the pool and rec, what we are doing is we are having two members of the city council, two members of the park and recreation commission, two members of the foundation, and two members of the planning commission to meet on a quarterly basis along with key members of staff to look and watch its timeline, to watch its budget, and to get consistent updates. We feel it's important to have our finger on the pulse, to know what's happening, and report back to the community and to the council. And so this will be, when it is completed, something that will last for decades to come um, and would be, will be an exciting time. We've also had pedestrian safety concerns. And obviously there has been allocation from groups that there have been some of the school elementaries in our school site as well as on San Bernardino Avenue, on Cherry, and in some other locations. It is, again, taking a step forward. It is utilizing outside folks that are willing through grants or through donation to help ensure that our youth and our community can walk the streets of San Bruno and feel a little safer than what sometimes they do today. Are we saying it's all fixed? We're not saying that. But we are saying we've made strides in order to make it better. Proactive planning for the future. You may have heard about this, the Bay Hill Specific Plan. This is a project that will probably go out into 20 years. I'm going to assume, and maybe I'm wrong, but all of the current council will not be here at that point. We might be retired. But this is something that really you're taking the whole complex from El Camino all the way up to Cherry and trying to figure out from when it was evolved from an office complex to what its future may be. It has had a lot of community input it has had public meetings, both at the Planning Commission, the City Council, uh, and as, as well as throughout the community to try to get input, come up with options and alternatives, and it has been a very interesting proposal. I personally am recused, but from uh, what I watch on TV when I'm in the other room, um, it's a lot of work, and it's been a lot of thoughtful process from our staff and from the stakeholders that are over there and for the future of San Bruno. Our San Bruno Cable Department. 
That is something that, as you know, we have been talking about, whether it's fiber to the homes, whether it is the marketing, rebranding, coming up with other aspects. For example, the user guide on channel one, you'll see that um, a whole, whole change coming up soon. Also, it's about offering better packaging. It's about offering and looking at our demographics in our community and what will be of their interest and what they want to sign up for. They're marketing things on their vehicles, which were not paid for by us, but by those that are marketing the channels, like the Spanish ch channel. So San Bruno Cable has come before us and said, here is, with Sunday being here about three months, gave a very uh, detailed presentation about where we're at, what we want to do. And if we want to move forward with fiber, what it will cost. And the council, uh, with unanimous consensus, said to staff, please go back and come back with a business plan. What do we want to do? How are we going to do it? And how will we get it done? And is that the path we want to go? But we have talked, we have heard, and they will be coming back with that plan for the future of San Bruno Cable. Also, Skyline Residential. Up by Skyline College, there are some projects going on. You have 40 single family dedicated homes, 30 apartment units, which are for college faculty and staff, affordable housing. It's on an eight acre site. It includes a private loop street with access on College Drive and College Road, two neighborhood parks, and an offsite fitness facility, which we can use. It is currently under um, construction, which was approved back in 2017 and continues on today. Facilities and infrastructure. Friends, this is a city that has done very well. And it's a city that has a lot of care and concern for it. But in reality also, um, it's a city that its facilities have been uh, erected back in the 50s. And at times have to obviously be either modified, rebuilt, um, and our infrastructure that we don't want to talk about, but the stuff that's underground. It's not, it's not fun. And once it's paved, everybody remembers how nice the street is, but they don't remember maybe the work that was done. And on San Mateo Avenue, which is the core of downtown, as you may remember, there was the large uh, water and sewer replacement project. This project consisted, consisted of installing approximately 1,800 feet of new 24-inch sewer pipeline and 2,200 feet of eight-inch new water piping along San Mateo Avenue between El Camino and Angus. The other thing that we have to mention is we want to thank and appreciate the patience of the community and especially the patience of the merchants that endured that, why we did that, but it was something that has to be done in order for the future of downtown in this city. Also on First Avenue, the sewer replacement. This project is to replace the main sewer identified on First Avenue. It's, there's a existing five inch diameter sewer main located between the cul-de-sac and uh, 504 First Avenue. It's undersized, it can back up. We can't afford SSOs. And so this project, when it's completed, will be able to have it more proficient, be maintained, and ensure that we don't have the SSOs that, as you know, we have a decree in order that we have to meet and make sure that we meet it on time. Street rehabilitation. If that's not one thing that any council member, both Thank you, Laura. In office or out of office, would probably be here all the time. When is my street going to be paved? That is one thing that most communities you will find have concerns with. The, the appropriate monies that are needed in order to fund it to a certain level. The pavement management program, it's uh, designed to repair streets, to slurry streets, to bring them up. Our current score, which they uh, rated, is a 63. A zero would be a failed street, and a hundred would be a street that was just recently surfaced. So for us, the council has worked together to try to have additional funds go for that when we had some monies come back from the uh, uh, trust fund from the PG&E. So we didn't put it back into the general fund, we put it into street paving. We put a million dollars for three years, which is now, we've exhausted that, and we put X number of dollars per year. This is something that we as a council are going to have to address if we want to see our PCI increased, if we want to meet a certain standard, then we're going to have to look to opportunities and options 
in which to achieve that, to get it to what is acceptable to this community. You can call, you can find out the timeline, but it may not be what you want to hear, but it's the reality of the revenues and the dollars that we have to deal with them. City park restrooms. So, restrooms, really, for the state of the city? This is a big deal. <laughs> You're talking, when I was a kid, I remember using the old restrooms. Those things were antiquated, outdated, and um, a lot of times I don't think our folks wanted us to even go use them. So this was a long overdue project that did take a little bit of time, but in all honesty, it was something that needed to be updated. It needed to be sized correctly. It had to have the right fixtures for preventativeness when it comes to mold or mildew, when it comes to graffiti, when it comes to vandalism. And it also needed to get better with the uh, need that we had when we have events in our parks, when we have the summer months in our parks. It was a prefab facility that came in and was placed and is operational. In addition, all the electrical used to come from Lara Field into that. That was redone for energy efficiency. Also for that, at Diamond 3 and by Lara Field, there's now facilities to hold the cleaning and custodial supplies. There's also stuff to hold the baseball diamond items, which used to be in a rusted bin that would sit over by the uh, fenced area. So these are things that may not be you know, attractive, but they are things that are needed in order to move the city forward. And gosh knows, if we're going to have a new aquatics program and rec center, we've got to have good bathrooms in the city park. So this is something that staff undertook, and I think that it, you will find, if you haven't used them yet, don't go tonight, they're closed, but um, you'll find that it was a big improvement for the community. And again, those, are, those came back in the 50s, and so it was overdue. The Joint Water Quality Control Plant, Liza Normandy, former mayor and city council from uh, South San Francisco is here, and uh, we were side by side, and usually, uh, I don't think her and I usually wear hats like that, but, but that they made us for the picture. But what this is was a joint project back in 1947 that the both organizations came for efficiencies, sharing technology, um, ideas and paths to better support the wastewater systems in our communities that serve us both. It is, it is a, um, a joint effort that's worked. And at this dedication, we were doing a groundbreaking for the wet weather and digester improvement project. Again, something you don't hear about, something that may not be the most exciting element, but a necessary. And the two organizations since 1947 have worked hand to hand and in order to provide for both, both communities. And that's located over by the um, uh, Costco, over by the airport. So just as where it's located. We had an exciting time, and this was at our Earl Glenview Park ribbon cutting. I don't have to tell you the history of that, that we lost that park back in 2010. And on the end of October of last year, with a bunch of excited young people, we cut the ribbon. My friends, the park was back. That neighborhood, this community, has gone through a lot. Doesn't mean we forget. It doesn't mean that there's still not pain. But what there is is a beautiful park. And one of the biggest things were is that they wanted to hear children playing again, that it has changed. And there have been families that moved in, kids that were excited. And now, as Carolyn and Charlie Gray, who live across the street, who, who've got ownership um, on it and watch out for it, it has been a very positive element up there. It is something that when we dedicated it and the Bolas family came, which we used one of their lots, who they lost so many people, it was important for them to be there, to be part of a moving forward, dedicating those lots to the future generations. This is an exciting time that I will tell you was a beautiful day, and I wanna thank staff, and I wanna thank that community, that neighborhood, for its patience, for what it's gone through and what it goes through. Aesthetics and safety. This is the San Bruno Avenue medium project. I think you may have seen that in operation. 
So these are improvement projects that will enhance the appearance of San Bruno Avenue between Elm Avenue and I-280 by implementing pedestrian safety improvements to promote walkable connections between highly densified employment centers, retail, and et cetera. What the great news is is that the city, this project and the program started in the 1718 budget, and that the city will receive a $735,000 in a construction grant fund. The grant requires the city to provide a minimum local match of funding of 11.47%, but a lot of this is from a grant that staff was able to acquire. And again, it takes a little time, but I think they're long on the way, and it should be done within a few months. FEMA. That's something that has affected our community, as they did with the flood plains and reevaluating where those lines were drawn. FEMA drew the lines, and it affected a great deal of our community in the avenues and around that neighboring area. So what the city of San Bruno decided to do was go ahead and appeal that decision, and we did. And had a lot of community outreach, unfortunately, as you might imagine, FEMA denied the appeal. And so there are areas in there that will need to get flood insurance, and they should reach out to FEMA because there's an element whether if you get it now, it is cheaper than whether it gets placed upon you and you wait too long. That's nothing we can prevent at this time, but what I do want to acknowledge is Jimmy Tan. Jimmy, most of you may not know it, but this is a project that he took to heart very passionately. And I remember talking to him about how disappointed, terribly disappointed he was about the outcome. But I wanna tell you first and foremost that that gentleman in his department took great passion and great heart and tried like heck to win and beat back that appeal. So Jimmy, to you and your department, I wanna acknowledge that. Thank you. We also have some new park pathways. The rehabilitation project consisted of sealing the cracks caused by obviously the ground settling, tree matter issues that, uh, that occur, water intrusion. And so now we have some of those are identified over at Commodore Park, Grundy Park, and following the paving was completed and obviously down in City Park. So those are things that obviously have needed improvement for some time, which we've heard about, and so they were done in order to make it level, a better enjoying, uh, enjoyment to park and safer for folks to walk. This is one that most everyone uh, was interested in for quite a while, and that is our Dogs on Leash. So as you know, the rule used to be that you could not have dogs in City Park at all. And it came forward, and with collaboration and cooperation of San Bruno Parks and Recreation Commission, the community came forward and said, well, why don't we try something? Why don't we modify what we have and see if it works? So we did a pilot program for six months, and honestly, the dogs as well as the owners were well behaved. <laughs> and so council took the action last year to implement that program so that within certain requirements that you can walk your dog through a particular park on a leash. And this is an enjoyment because as we know, for a lot of us, dogs are members of the family. They're not just four-legged animals. And so this was something though as a collaboration of a community. And I think that watched out for one another to make sure this would be a successful pilot program, which it was. There was also an appreciation event at YouTube. For those of us that I'm sure remember, in April of last year, we had an active shooter at YouTube. The call came out, and our staff, and it's also Public Works that was there, it's also our fire, it's also our police, that they came out and to preserve and protect. But also what happened that day is we had people who were in the condos who opened up their home. We had businesses at Bay Hill that opened up their door to hide, to shelter. This is again what I will tell you that I always am so proud of San Bruno, is that we do go through tragedies. Every community does, but we're not a stranger to it. 
But what I always find and what I always see is that this community comes together through courage, through perseverance, and through just heart. And they reach out. It also reminds us about what our staff does for us. All of the city departments and all of the staff, what they do. And that we never know what tomorrow may bring. But what I do sleep well at night is knowing the staff that we have and our public safety personnel and the service that they give. I was seeing some of them yesterday and I can tell you hearing them, watching some of them, serving our community, what they do have is spirit, pride, care, concern, and it's something that you can't be taught, it just comes from within. But I will tell you as much as I may hear from folks that some department doesn't do it perfect, or maybe we could do it better. What I will say is when someone dials 911, I've never heard a complaint about when they've arrived at the door or to care for a family member. So I again want to acknowledge not just our safety personnel for that day, I want to acknowledge the whole department and I want to acknowledge all the team of the city of San Bernardino's employees for what it did and what it does. It is again, a proud moment for this community on how it reacts and how it cares. And I believe in some way it's a collaboration between YouTube and, and the city of San Bruno. So to our staff, to our public safety personnel, thank you again. <clears throat> Downtown, streetscapes. This is something that came before the council just this year. Long talked about, we've approved for the streetscapes. This would look into all facets. Garbage cans, seating, plants, trees, signage, the fountain that doesn't work. To really come back on a tight time schedule, one thing the council unanimously said was, okay, we've been down this path before. Let's set real expectations, but let's see some real results. And it was told to us by July, and my comment was, if it goes off track or off timeline, I want the council to know immediately. So this is something unanimously the council has gone forward because this is the center part. We do see revitalization and we see some projects happening and we wanna take it to the next level. So this has been approved and it will be coming back to improve what is there and move forward for the future and encourage development going forward. Talking about development, We obviously, you may see this project right next to San Bruno Cable TV. This is again a three-story mixed-use development consisting of 83 residential units up top. Ken is here. Um, and my understanding is it will go available this quarter of this year, the first quarter. It is about, six, uh, there's about 6,900 square feet of retail space down below. There is parking underneath the, the, in the garage portion for the residents. And so this project is nearing its completion and has been something. And if we can remember back to the El Camino Plaza, what it used to be, that was the old theater. I remember when I went there, it had one screen. Those are things of the past. But it also had got dilapidated. It had came into a condition that actually people were breaking in. And it was, it was an eyesore. So from where it was to where it is and what we'll be opening up soon, I'm very excited for that possibility and what is going to go down that corridor. At 111 San Bernardino Avenue, some remember, might remember the um, bank building. So history is, can you remember the last time it actually got used before it was torn down? Tom Lantos was running for Congress and somebody in the Democratic Party was running against him and they rented the bank for a few weeks. They didn't win, um, but that was the last time it was used before they tore it down. They're also going to be utilizing the building that is, was behind the bank building. And that will then come down and it will be one joint project. That's a five story mixed use building with six, uh, 62 dwelling units, 7,700 square feet of ground floor commercial space. They're applying for permits in February of this year. And that was a project that the council looked back in, in uh, November of last year. 
the Mills Park Plaza, if you remember what that is, and that has been long talked about for years. The proposal is to construct two five-story mixed-use buildings that would extend along El Camino Real, San Bruno Avenue to Angus Avenue, approximately 400 plus dwelling units and 5,400 square feet of ground floor retail space. This has not yet been approved by the council, but this is something that obviously has been talked about at the Planning Commission and obviously has been working toward this a project, uh, which will be a big undertaking. Um, so I think we're taking our time, we're doing it right, uh, but they are excited about the project. Community engagement. Obviously, touch a truck event. This was held at Bel Air Elementary. If you can imagine telling kids they can get out of class, first of all, and then telling them they can go play with all these toys. So this is something that the Public Works Department does and is a way to reach out, educate, teach parents as, as well as the youth about what the various aspects are and what we do and what the Public Works Department does. This is a event that they've been having for a few years now that is successful and that um, any young person would enjoy. And yes, if you wanna go, just let us know. We can, we can arrange that too. But also, neighborhoods. There's some annual events, as you know. There's the pancake breakfast and Easter egg hunt, community day, coffee with a cop, something that we hadn't done years ago. Music in the park, the holiday tree lighting ceremony, national night out, movies in the park, Shakespeare in the park, Halloween parade. An interesting one was the two departments, badge, badge versus badge, fire, police, doing a blood drive. First time they tried that. And the success was more than they had even thought possible. Some people waited an hour. Some people had to be turned away. It was just a bigger turnout than they could have imagined. I believe that this is something that they will be doing again, but I will tell you the, the community found it interesting, and we won't mention who won, but one of the departments beat the other by one pint. We'll just leave it there. Future initiatives. So upcoming projects. We have 500 Sylvan. Now, if you remember, that used to be like a dentist's office. That's been sitting there for some time. That would then go ahead and get uh, demolished. It would go ahead and be nine residential units with parking, of course. Also at 271 El Camino Real, that's the former Lee Buffet. And for those of you who've been in town a while, the distillery. That is a three-story multifamily development with 24 dwelling units, 51 parking spaces on the basement level. This is under current review, so it has not come forward yet, but it's under current review. Some additional upcoming projects. 160 El Camino Real. The proposal is to build a three-story upscale hotel with 34 rooms and 37 parking spots that's located mostly up ground. So this is currently an existing 10,000 square foot lot. And as you know, that has been vacant for some time. Also, Glenview Terrace. There is a proposal to construct 29 single family homes in the northeast corner of San Bruno Avenue and Glenview. The project is on a 3.28 uh, acre site. And this project is currently under review. But we have challenges ahead. And here are some of them. The stability. Like I said, the council have met and will be meeting on the 18th to discuss potential revenue enhancements. Impact fees. This has been talked about for a long time, but action is happening. And this is something that we will be able to get back in order to ensure the needed infrastructure is taken care of. Parking downtown and residential neighborhoods. This is something that's been talked about for a while. This started back with the San Mateo Avenue back in 216 by a grant that was issued, subsequent came to council in 217. We've had community outreach, community interest, feedback, and that's coming back. Also when it comes to TCP, transit corridor plan, parking ratios, metric. The council has talked about that. On May 8th of 2018, council met in study session and each one of the members of the council, and they're here, they can correct me, said, we need to bring this back. This needs to be looked at and needs to be tweaked. And so staff was given that direction on May 8th to come back. 
And as you know, we've had some change within the city manager and the community development director. And so the meeting for that is going to be scheduled tomorrow, right here at this facility at six o'clock. Wildland mitigation, that's a concern that people have had. On tonight's agenda, there is an item about that on getting resources so that we can prioritize and strategically go at that and address those issues and those matters that affect the neighborhoods worse. Infrastructure projects. As we all know, our facilities are mature and upgrading and improvement is needed. What? Is it stuck? Thank you. That's the only thing with these flags, I can't see. Recreation Aquatic Center. We've already talked about that, but that is a huge project undertaking that obviously will take a few years to do, but I'm looking forward and excited. Small cell towers. You've all heard about that. So the Planning Commission, the City Council has met, the Planning Commission has met, they've had community input and outreach. The city has gone forward and is drafting ordinances in which we can do. Understand there's federal law. They give us very little wiggle room as a city in which to say no. It gets down to aesthetics sometimes and when they correct that, the next thing is a lawsuit. So understand every community is facing this and having this challenge. This council has been meeting on this and again, we will be bringing back an ordinance to hopefully do what we can within current federal law. Short-term rentals, Airbnb. So that is an item that has been discussed about and will be coming back this summer in order for council to review and or take action in regards to it. So, obviously, you can hear about all the stuff from the city on the website, social media, SB response, phone or email, visit the offices, uh, receive emergency notifications, SMC alert. During the storm that we had, which I will tell you, your public works, parks, and uh, police and fire were exceptionally busy that night. Uh, these alerts will help you identify and know when a street is closed. We had wires down, we had trees down. And so obviously, um, we had people inundating, sometimes with phone calls, that could be about when is my power coming back on to 911, or I need somebody to come to my house to find my matches. This is true. It, it, it sounds, it, but that's the stuff that I know and I've seen firsthand that even when they have a lot placed before them, they prioritize and they go ahead and they get the job done. What I will say is that in this city that I've been honored to live in my whole life, I will say, people will say, Rico, you're passionate. I say the answer is yes. I have a deep love for this city. The answer is yes. Do I believe, even when I worked here, even when I was a volunteer, that things move fast enough? Of course not. Government, I don't think, was ever designed to do it as fast as a private enterprise business may do. But what I do know is that with the help of a community, with people being collaborative and cooperative, with finding some common ground in order to move something forward and being respectful to each other, when we're asked to either give our opinion or when maybe we just need to take a breath before we offer our opinion. This community has done a lot for me personally and was one of the reasons I wanted to run. I was up here Thursday at their 32nd anniversary for the San Bruno Senior Center. I remember when it opened. And I've known a lot of the folks that have come through this door that are no longer here or are here today. And each one of them offers so much. They have made me and this community since an elementary school has made me a stronger man and a better person. And I know in my heart of hearts that as a collective, not just in a disaster time, but when it talks about our future, the legacy we wanna leave, how we wanna be remembered, the difference we wanna make, it'll take all of us that live throughout this community that see something possible and find a way to do it. My friends, I think we're blessed to live in the city with the heart and I'm honored to be its mayor. And I'm happy 
to have my colleagues. And in 218, my friends, we have moved the ball. We are moving forward. And I think San Bruno's time in 2019, the best is yet to come. Thank you very much.